I lift up my soul. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you have I hoped all the day long. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions, but think of me on your goodness, O Lord, according to your steadfast love. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore shall he teach sinners in the way. He will guide the humble in doing right and teach his way to the lowly. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth to those who keep his covenant and his testimony. For your name's sake, O Lord, be merciful to my sin, for it is great. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Who are those who fear the Lord? Them will he teach in the way that they should choose. Their soul shall dwell at ease and their offering shall inherit the land. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came near and asked Jesus, which commandment is the first of all? And Jesus answered, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher, you have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbour as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared ask him any further questions. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Firstly, an apology. It seems that possibly you weren't hearing the words at the beginning of the service today. 
I can only say that when I was grappling with phone during the um, first reading, I switched the plug round and I understand now you can hear it all, so that's great news. And my apologies for that. We can't tell um, immediately before the service when we've turned it all on, whether it's coming through or not. So there we are. You're very warmly welcome to Mitchum Parish Church this morning, and I hope you're still with us. So a reflection on the gospel reading here today. The query addressed to Jesus by the scribe seems to have been more sincer- had more sincerity to it than the tricky questions that many of the scribes put to Jesus earlier in this narrative of Mark. The scribe asks, which is the greatest commandment? Apparently other Jewish teachers of the time had debated this question, and there were many learned answers, and many of them were written down in the, in the Mishnah. And one of them, which came up regularly, was that the most important commandment was to love your parents, to honour your parents being the greatest commandment. Now, Jesus evades getting into legalistic arguments about which commandment is the most important by commending love of God and love of neighbour. These two demands are much more fundamental than any commandment to do this or to not do that. They require an attitude which is unrelenting in its demands and contains no other possible moral approach. You love God, you love your neighbour. If we were truly to love God and neighbour, then it follows, doesn't it, that all the right behaviour carries on. For they are the most fundamental of commands. Loving God and being inspired by him, and then loving our neighbour, which expresses our love for God and our love for God's creation. As St. Augustine put it, love and do what you will. Now, that might be a bit of an open invitation, but we can follow where Augustine's going there in the sense of love God and then do what you will, and if you love God, you will always follow the right pathway. And I think this is a very, very good gospel reading for us to actually consider on this, the first day after the great feast of Eastertide when we've been celebrating the resurrection of Christ and his return to the Father. It's really important, isn't it, for us to think about how we're conducting our day-to-day lives. And we were talking on Sunday about the Holy Spirit coming forth, the Holy Spirit actually being there and breathing life into us, the disciples. And now, of course, we're talking about, well, what do we do when we go out into the world? The motivation and inspiration of love will carry us through every situation. In one sense, the commandment to love God does not require to do anything else specific because everything follows on, and particularly reflection and prayer. For loving God means we have to speak to God and converse with God, and that is how we pray. And as soon as we actually pray, So we become thoughtful in our conversations with God about how we behave in the world. And so we actually need that guidance. But we don't need that moralistic guidance of the Old Testament commandments in one sense. We don't need to be told not to kill, not to commit adultery and all of those other things because we know how damaging they can be. But we do know that loving God and following God and being connected to God is fundamental. A loving relationship to God, a prayerful relationship with God, nourished by prayer, nourished by reflection, nourished by our conversation with him, knowing that he's always there for us, is probably more effective for our living than all the repeated do's and don'ts in the whole of Christendom. So let us resolve in this new, ordinary time to make sure that we indeed do put God first and neighbour alongside him. Amen.
And so we come to our intercessions, we come to our prayers, when we open ourselves to God and bring to him our petitions. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, we bring before you our prayers this day, praying especially for your church. We pray for Justin, our Archbishop, Christopher, Bishop of Southwark, and Richard, Bishop of Kingston. We pray for Simon, our Archdeacon, and Rachel, our Area Dean. We pray for the parishes of this deanery, and we pray especially for the Mitcham parishes, praying particularly for this parish at this time, asking God to bless all who are members of this parish church, And we remember St. Catherine's Church in Kingsdale, in Matabeleland, Zimbabwe, that they may be guided in the way of all truth and unite themselves in prayer to Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your world. We pray especially for all who have been affected by COVID-19, and we offer our prayers for medical and care staff and key workers, all those selflessly working to relieve the situation that we find ourselves in currently. We pray for peace in the world. As we hear of the turmoil in the United States, we pray for all nations and for equality of opportunity, Pray, as we were taught on Sunday, on the day of Pentecost, when all the different languages were heard, we pray for the diversity of the world. And we pray for respect for each and every member of this world's population. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring before you our concerns, particularly for our neighbours, and we pray for those who we know are sick or in need at this time. We pray for Dylan Long, Steve Watt, Simon Ennin, Anita Kylo, Robert Willis, Maria Yanaki, Peter Coley, Margaret Hudson, Kwame, Sandra Wood, Anne Gillis, and Barbara Atkins. We pray for those in our intercessions book. And in a moment of silence, we pray for those who we carry in our own hearts this very day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the promise of eternal life which you give us. We pray for the departed, remembering those who have recently died, Paula Hughes, David Cooper, and William McClannan. We remember those whose year's mind falls at about this time, giving thanks for their lives, their example, and their love. Rest eternal, grant them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we offer all our prayers to you as we come to your throne this morning, as we seek your blessing as we go on with our day-to-day -day life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to the peace. Will you all please stand for the peace? We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Thank you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace and pray for those who we would usually be offering the peace to at this moment if we were privileged to be in church saying our prayers. Peace be with you. not sound has not been lost blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made it will become for us the bread of life Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you. And of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. The Lord is lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who on the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and again he gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Mother of God, Peter, Paul and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
in this sacrament, we are one family in Christ, your Son, one in the sharing of his body and blood, and one in the communion of his spirit. Help us to grow in love for one another and come to the full maturity of the body of Christ. We make our prayer through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we say the prayer after communion together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup Bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just before our service finishes this morning, I'd like again to apologise for the hiatus at the beginning, where it seems that the sound wasn't carrying through onto our Facebook broadcast, but I know now that you can hear what's going on. Hopefully you still can hear what's going on. We will continue to broadcast our services regularly on Tuesday at 9.30 and on Sunday at 10 o'clock, our usual parish times. And we do look forward to welcoming you and hopefully seeing and hearing both <laughs> elements on Sunday. I'm mindful of the fact that, in actual fact, we may it means that we didn't actually get to hearing even the collect this morning. So I will pray the collect before the blessing so that we can all join together in that. So let us pray. O Lord, from whom all good things come, Grant to us, your humble servants, that by your holy inspiration we may think those things that are good, and by your merciful guiding may perform the same. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.